Now, Virgin Galactic is set to finally begin commercial space flights. A major milestone for the company founded in 2004 by British billionaire Richard Branson. However, the catastrophic implosion of a sub near the wreckage of Titanic serves as a sobering moment for another extreme and risky tourism industry, the private human space flight. Here's all you need to know about commercial space flights and the worries over safety. Now dubbed as Galactic 01, the 90-minute mission will take off from Spaceport in America, New Mexico. Meanwhile, the crew will conduct 13 supervised and autonomous experiments during the mission. Now, experiments also include measuring radiation levels in the undersea levels studied mesosphere, assessment of how certain liquids and solids mix in microgravity as well. This will also be done. Meanwhile, let's also tell you more about the mission. Virgin Galactic uses a mothership aircraft with two pilots, takes off from runway and gains high altitude. Now the mothership aircraft then drops rocket-powered plane that soars into space before gliding back. The passengers in the space plane's cabin experience a few minutes of weightlessness during the mission. And they catch a glimpse of the planet's curvature from more than 80 kilometers above sea level. Now, Virgin Galactic has sold around 800 tickets for the future commercial flights. Now, let's tell you more about uh, the tickets that were sold. Number one, 600 between 2005 to 2014 for $200,000 to $250,000. And 200 since then for $450,000 each. Now, let's tell you more about the first beginnings, setbacks and the way ahead for Virgin Galactic. Now, the company's program uh, suffered a disaster in 2014. That is, when a space plane on a test flight broke apart mid-air, killing the co-pilot and seriously injuring uh, the pilot as well. In 2021, billionaire Richard Branson soared to space aboard Virgin Galactic flight. And the company then faced a brief grounding by the Federal Aviation Administration. Now, Branson flight deviated from its assigned airspace. The U.S. government agency has found that the Branson flight, like we just mentioned, had deviated from its assigned airspace and Virgin Galactic did not communicate the mishap as required. Now, later, lab testing revealed that certain materials were used in its vehicles and had, which had fallen below required strength margins. Now, the company ended its uh, space flight pause with a successful test in May, paving the way for Thursday's mission. There are also worries over safety and commercial space travel. Let's tell you more about that. Now, no single set of consensus standards for participant safety adopted across the industry. Commercial space flight companies have their own set of rules of safety practices as well. And then there are hurdles in assessment of safety practices. Now, the individual companies deem information to be proprietary or otherwise not publicly releasable. Now, some stakeholders feel that all industry operations might not be ready for these kind of regulations. For more on this, we have with us Dr. Malcolm L. Davis. He's Defence and Space Policy Analyst and he's joining us live from Australia. Thank you so much for joining us in Bjorn, Professor. My pleasure. Now, uh, Dr. Davis, it is indeed a historic day for Virgin Galactic, but, uh, but experts are now citing concerns and talking about the potential risks of the mission. Talk to us more on that. Well, look, there's an old saying that is used repeatedly that space is hard, and I think that it's very true. Uh, we're talking about essentially the exploration of space and, in this case, uh, the sending of tourists into space. Uh, or non-trained uh, non astronauts into space. So it's doubly dangerous in that sense that, you know, space things can go wrong. Uh, we saw that with the Challenger shuttle disaster and then the Columbia shuttle disaster. Uh, and now we're talking about space tourists. So I think that these are the early steps in space tourism. It's akin to commercial aviation in, say, the 1920s. Um, but if you now look at where we are with commercial aviation, you and I can get on a plane, fly from Delhi to Sydney and not even think about it. Think about where we will be 
in 50 or 60 years time and I think that's where we're headed. So we have to take these early steps, we have to take these risks, risks and develop the technologies to get to that point whereby commercial space flight becomes a, a, a thing that no one really thinks about, they just do. Right, Dr. Davis, now the, the, the upcoming launch also comes at a time when the Titan submersible disaster and it has indeed put a spotlight on another major extreme venture, uh, space tourism. So in your viewpoint, what is the future of private human space flight and are they safe enough? Oh, I think there's a future, but we have to take it at a slow and steady pace. We can't assume that we're going to have commercial space flight up and running and, and make it safe for the average user or affordable for the average user uh, for a while yet. As I said, these are the early stages. These are the early days of commercial space flight. Uh, we have to continue to develop the technology. The Virgin Galactic uh, vehicle uh, that will be flying is an early uh, design uh, capability. And that will lead to more advanced designs down the track Already we're seeing uh, the development of reusable rockets like uh, SpaceX's uh, Starship Super Heavy that ultimately could lead to much more uh, large-scale space tourism in the future. But uh, I think that, yes, there are risks. There, are, there will be uh, losses of people and accidents. Right. But unless we continue to try, unless we continue to push that envelope, we'll never get to the point whereby we can get on a spacecraft uh, that flies off under its own power like an airliner flies into space, uh, goes to a, a space station or uh, lands on the other side of the world uh, in what's known as a suborbital hop uh, after of only 45 minutes. Right, Dr. Davis, uh, my last question to you. Let's talk about the upcoming uh, mission of uh, the Virgin Galactic. We've seen that the company has seen few setbacks. Like in 2014, the space plane on test flight broke apart mid-air. In your viewpoint, what are the chances of making it this time? Oh, that's impossible to say. I mean, I'm sure that Virgin Galactic have taken every precaution. They learned a lot from that accident. Uh, they redesigned the vehicle in terms of the way its structure was formed and so forth. It's impossible to say how any space mission will go. You can uh, have a satellite on a rocket on a launch pad and blast it off and it can go horribly wrong or it can go get into orbit with no problems. It's just impossible to say. But I think that, as I said at the beginning of my analysis, You've just got to keep on trying because you learn through trying and there will never have commercial space flight uh, unless we continue to try. Right, absolutely. We'll, of course, be uh, tracking uh, the upcoming mission and how it unfolds here on Beyond. But thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, Dr. Davis. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.